So good evening, friends. So today we are going to talk about our subject surveying here. Okay. So as you can understand, right, we are going to discuss about the important concepts and discussions for you know both polytechnic lecturer as well as AW vacancies. Okay. So we this is a combined session for both these particular examinations. Right. And if you look at the weightage of surveying, right, it is having a weightage of around the 18 marks. Okay. Right. So it's a high weightage topic. Right. So please. Uh, go through this particular topic very, uh, you know, very carefully. In detail manner, we'll go through that. Whatever important concepts are there, right, within the syllabus given to us, we'll try and discuss. We'll try and discuss these concepts by using some, you know, uh, numericals by using some questions, and we'll try and understand the options one by one, and we'll see when an option would be correct. Okay. So this is the syllabus of our, you know, uh, examination. Right. So basic principles of surveying, classification of surveying. Uh, followed by chain surveying, combo surveying level. So horizontal distance, horizontal angle, vertical distance, and the theory line will give you the vertical angles. Followed by contouring, right? Followed by curves, introductions and fundamental concepts of electronic distance measurement. Followed by you know EDM, total station, and GPS and GIS. Okay, these are the major topics that we can have. Okay, so that is the syllabus. If you look at the chapters of uh, surveying, these are the main major chapters that we are having. Like basic concepts, very important. So many questions are coming from this basis concepts of uh, surveying, chain surveying, copper surveying, plate table surveying, leveling. So by this, you know, all the four basic measurements are being introduced one by one. Theodolite is going to give you the vertical angle. There. Okay, trigonometric leveling is also there. Traversing an object measurement followed by contours, areas and volumes, stoichiometry, and curves. Photogrammetry is not that important for our, you know, AW point of view as well as our. You know, uh, polytechnic, uh, polytechnic lecturer point of view. This is uh, a topic that you can go through if you are, you know, looking into your APPSC examinations. Okay. Total station is there, GIS, GPS, and uh, as well as total station is written. Right. So these are the major topics that we are going to have. Okay. We'll try and discuss, you know, some questions here. Okay. Some important concepts we'll try and understand here one by one. Right. So let us look at this question here. Hydrographic surveying deals with mapping of what? Large water, body, uh, large water bodies, rainfall data, hilly areas and cities. What do you mean by hydro? Hydro means obviously it is nothing but water. So the best possible answer here should be what? Large water bodies. So this is a common type of question that they ask in all of the competitive examination, inclusive of gate as well as engineering services. Okay. So we have classifications of surveying based on purpose. Okay. Classifications of surveying based on instruments used. So the first classification that is based on purpose is very, very important for us. There are some, you know, 10, 16 classifications that we have. You please read these particular classifications very carefully. Be in a position to identify the survey provided they give you the definition. Right. So they will give you the definition. You should be able to identify what kind of survey that is. That's enough. Okay. So read it two, three times. Make sure that you are in a position to answer that. Moving on. Survey which are carried out to provide a national grid of control for preparation of accurate maps for large areas are known as. So there are a few things that you should note here. They are talking about accurate maps and they are talking about large areas. Large area and accuracy will it come in plane surveying? Absolutely not. Plane surveying does not consider the curvature of the earth, which means it is applicable only for smaller extent of area. Right? Tharavata mana geodetic surveying and pedda area ki. And akra curvature is considered. So you please remember that. Curvature is considered in geodetic surveying. Therefore, it can be applicable for large areas. Geographical surveys are identified uh, to represent the geographical features, including of the topographic features. Right. So these two are almost the same only. Right. So these two can be eliminated because they are, you know, more interested in plotting the uh, geographical details like hills, valleys, and mountains, etc. Plane surveying is eliminated, so the best possible answer is geodetic survey. Okay. So this classification of surveying based on whether you take, you know, curvature or not is very important. Divisions. Okay. Primary divisions are plane surveying without curvature, geodetic surveying with curvature. Okay. Those points we have discussed, go through them very, you know, closely. The representative fraction of 1 in 1800 means that the scale is dash. So they are given RF, they are asking you for the engineer scale. What is the meaning of this? Every 1 centimeter on the paper represents what? 1800 meters on the, sorry, centimeters on the ground. Correct now? Yes. So, every 1 centimeter on the paper will represent this many number of centimeters on the ground. This 1800 centimeters can be written as what? 18 meter. So we can understand every one centimeter will represent what? 18 meter. The answer is option C. Okay. 
Okay. This representation is known as engineer scale. This representation is known as R. Also remember, if one centimeter on the paper represents 18 meter, in area measure, I can write like this, every one centimeter square will measure 18 square meters square on the ground. This is useful for problem solving. Okay. So this is what we call it as our scale. Please remember that. Moving on. Right. The main principle of field surveying is to, see this is one of the most fundamental questions in surveying. In your college also, when you go for your external examination, VIVA, the external examination's first question is this. What are the principles of surveying? Please remember that. Right. The correct answer is, we know, old part. The correct answer is old part. Right. Why do we have to work with old part? Because if we work from old to part, our errors get localized. Our errors get localized. If you work from part to whole, what will happen? If you work from part to whole, the error will accumulate. Okay. So this terminology is also, you please remember, working from whole to part will allow the errors to be localized. Okay. But if you work from part to whole, the errors will start to get accumulated. Therefore, it is not the correct answer. D is the correct answer. Higher level to lower level, lower level to higher level are all blunders. Okay. Which of the following statements in respect of map A having a scale of 1 in 1000 and another map having a scale of 1 in 500, sorry, 5000 is true. So map A is having large scale, map B is having large scale, map B is more detailed map, none of the above. So you look at the RF here. So the first RF is what? 1 upon 1000. Okay. Tarvata, mana second RF is 1 upon 5000. So today, right, these two are fractions. Okay. Which fraction is higher? Right, which fraction is higher or which fraction is larger? See, the denominator of this second fraction is more, therefore this fraction is less. So this is a small fraction. This is a small fraction. The denominator of this RF compared to the first one is less. Okay, the denominator is less. So the ratio will be large. So this is a larger fraction. So if this is a large fraction, this is a large scale. Okay, if this is a small fraction, this is a small scale. So you put a our options should be map A is having large scale. So A and A 1 in 1000. So this is A okay, and this is B. Okay. So map A large scale tarvata, map compared to map B. Okay. Is that statement correct? Yes. This is large scale. Okay. So that statement is correct. So our correct answer would be option A. Okay. Right. So good to end. So pudu, mana denominator is small and the fraction is large. Large fraction and a large scale. That's it. Okay. If you compare 2000 and 5000, 5000 is larger than the value. So fraction and a chinna fraction, small fraction and a scale, small scale. Okay. Ranging operation in surveying is a process of ranging and a recognizance. No. Recognizance means what? Site visit. Right. Recognizance and a site to visit. Okay. Remember that. Judging the distance. No. We are doing engineering work. There is no judging. If at all you want to do judging, you have to do that in recognizance only. Okay. Establishing intermediate points between terminals, terminals and terminal points, end stations. Okay, okay. Uh, determination of slope. Right. Slope is eliminated. Okay. Slope uh, to calculate slope, we have instruments like clinometer. Okay. Here they are asking for an operation. So the correct answer here should be establishing the intermediate points. But when you have to do ranging? So bro, we will see this particular condition here. So these are the terminal stations, P point and the Q point. So I will say that the PQ distance is 120 meter. When a PQ distance 120 meter, measure chair and key, mana pakana 30 meter chain on the okay. So ask yourself the question: can I measure the entire PQ distance by using the 30 meter chain at once? No, we cannot measure. We have to measure in right parts 0 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, like that we need to measure. So you can arrange kawala, kawali, you need. You need to do ranging here. Right. Uh, next up, you imagine this PQ distance is now say 12 meter. So my PQ distance 12, but chain is 30. Can I measure the entire 12 meters at once? Absolutely yes. So we could have ranging on Right. So what is the condition for ranging? Ranging is necessary only when survey line is longer than the chain length. Please remember that. Right. Ranging? ranging is required only when the survey line is longer than the given chain length. Put on a survey line, right? If it is shorter than the chain length, then we can measure it at once. So ranging akra, right? It's not required, right? Akra udu. Okay. Next. This is a very important discussion for us. A well-conditioned triangle. So this is the principle of our chain surveying. Please remember. 
a well conditioned triangle has angles not less than dash and more than dash respectively. So please remember a triangle is said to be well conditioned if none of the angles are too acute and none of the angles are too obtuse. Okay? And the limit of acuteness is 30 degree and the limit of obtuseness we keep it as 120 degree. 120 degrees. So here the triangle angle should not have an angle less than 30 and not more than 120 degree. So 30 comma 120 degree options they do only possible answers option A. Okay. So remember this is the principle of chain survey. We need to divide the entire area to be surveyed into network of well conditioned triangles. Okay. And the condition is that no angle should be too acute and no angle should be too obtuse. Okay. Limit of acuteness we keep it as 30 degree. For the limit of obtuseness we will keep it as 120 degree. So mathematically if the angles lie between 30 and 120 that is a well conditioned triangle. That's it. None of this is what we will select here. Next step. If H is the difference in height between the end points of a chain or length L, the required slope correction is dash. Try to understand the field condition here. What they are trying to say is, this is my point A, and my point B here. Right? Here is length L. What they are saying is, point A and B right, is having a difference in elevation of H. Okay? And their slope correction in D. That is the question. So we have an equation of correction for slope, right? If binomial equation will look like this, h square divided by 2l plus h raised to 4 divided by 8 l cube, right? Plus etc, etc, etc. From what I mean, right? We will neglect the higher powers because compared to length, the sloping length, this h value will be very small. Okay? We do chain surveying in flat ground, not in hilly terrain where h value will be large. So h value compared to L, chala chinna di. Okay. So h raised to 4 by L cube is going to be a fractional value, very very small value. So what we will do? We will neglect that. So what is the equation for correction for slope? h square divided by 2L. So the correct option is option A. So they will ask you questions like this. If higher powers are not neglected, correction for slope will increase by how much? It will increase by this factor. Remember, correction for slope is always negative correction. So they are only asking you formula, just select option. Right, so uh, next question, a scale representing either three units or only one unit and its fractions up to second decimal uh, place of a decimal point is, right, diagonal comparative vernier shrunk scale. She shrunk scale is applicable only if the map undergoes shrinkage, okay. So it is not a scale by which we will prepare a map, that is a scale we have to use after the map has undergone shrinkage, so immediately eliminated. Uh, after one year, comparative and diagonal, who is the correct answer? The correct answer is diagonal scale. Okay. So remember, diagonal scale can measure any particular unit. Tarvata, 1 by 10th of the same unit. Tarvata, 1 by 100 of the same unit. So how many points we will get here? We will get 3. Okay. 3 units are measured. If you are only measuring 2 units, right? so unit and only 1 by 10th of the unit, what is the resulting scale known as? This resulting scale is known as my plane scale. What is this? Plane scale. So plane scale will measure two successive dimensions. Diagonal scale will measure three successive dimensions. Okay. Vernier scales are used to measure fractional part of the right smallest division in the main scale. We put it in the main scale. Right. These are the main scale graduations. Okay. These are the main scale graduations. If you want to take any fractional readings of the main scale, fractional you know, portions of the main scale if you want to read, there I will use the Vernier scale. Okay, now? Right. Moving on. Alright, so next step. Offsets in surveying arc. Okay, offsets and AD. Chain lines out of alignment. Wrong. Small measurements from chain line. Okay. Measurements taken in uh, chain survey. It can be anything. Okay. None of the above. So the best possible answer out of B and C is option B. Now remember, what are offsets? So, if this is our chain line here, offsets are nothing but lateral measurements taken from chain line. If there is a building here, to plot this particular building, if I take a lateral measurement like this, this is what we call it as an offset. So, if you do, right, this offset is at 90 degrees to the chain. So, I call it as a perpendicular offset. I can call it as a perpendicular offset. If I am plotting the edge of this particular building by an inclined offset like this. It is not making 90 degree, so I will call it as an inclined offset. 
okay, inclined offset. So based on direction, if it is 90 degree to the chain, it is perpendicular. If it is not 90 degree to the chain, it is inclined offset. Based on length also, we have two types of offsets. We have short offset, tarvata long offset. Short and the tarvata long would only. Okay. Short and day less than 15 meters. Okay. Long and day greater than 15 meters. Okay. Now in chain survey, do you prefer to use a short or a long offset? We'll always go for shorter offsets. To limit the error in plotting the details, right, we will always go with short offsets. So now this statement makes more sense. Small measurements, right? Short offsets, right? It makes more sense. Right? The correct answer should be what option B will be. Right. The correction for SAG is always additive, always subtractive, always zero, sometimes additive, sometimes negative. The answer is correction gada. Correction is always subtractive. Why? Because you see, right, when I keep my, you know, say, you know, one wooden peg here and one wooden peg here so that I can measure the distances, okay, say capital D, right, whenever I hang the chain between these two points, what happens? The chain will take a shape like this. We call that shape as a capillary shape, correct now? Yes. So, we are trying to get this horizontal distances, but due to this catenary shape, the chain will take this shape here, okay. So, it would be L mana measured value, D mana correct value. So, L not equal to D, gala. L not equal to D. So, error on D. So, what is error? Error on D, measured value L minus correct value D. If you do that, who is greater? L greater or D greater? Who is greater? Clearly, L is greater. There is no condition, right, where the curved length can be shorter than the corresponding horizontal distance. Arc length between two points cannot be shorter than the chord length between the same two points. Okay. So remember, L always greater than D. And I am an error, positive was D. Rather, correction, negative was D. Okay, so correction is always negative. So please remember this, okay? The cumulative corrections, right, required in change surveying. The tape corrections required, you need to remember them. Okay, first one is correction for standardization. Right, if the chain is not of standard length, right, what is the correction I require? Correction for standardization. Correction for temperature. Correction for pull. Please remember, these three corrections can be either positive or negative. If the field pull is more than standard pull, field pull less than standard pull, field temperature more than standard temperature, field temperature less than standard temperature, chain too long, chain too short, all of this condition can make my correction either positive or negative. But the error due to slope, error due to sag, error due to bad ranging will always be right, positive, the resulting correction will always be so please go through that formulas. We have especially discussed in the classroom. Formulas are very important. Direct application of formulas will not come. But based on the formula, they will frame theoretical questions like this. Okay? So please pay attention to that. Right. Next up. Chain surveying is the most suitable when. Chain surveying is most suitable when. So field condition they are asking. Ground is fairly level and open. Okay? Ground is fairly level and open with simple details to be plotted. Area is small in extent. Plants are required on a large scale. All of the above. What is the correct answer here? Right. Do I go for chain surveying when the ground is leveled? Leveled and tape flat. Okay. Or when the ground is you know, rough and hilly? We never go with rough and hilly terrain. Okay. Because in rough and hilly terrain, our you know, degree of accuracy is very less. Right. We have standard values of degree of accuracy. Yes. Okay. So, is this statement correct? Absolutely yes. Chain surveying is best suited for flat terrains, so fairly leveled ground with a few simple details to be plotted. Exact same definition that we discussed. Right, uh, area is small in extent, yes, very suitable because chain is 30 meter only now. So if you keep on going for longer length, it will be very difficult for us to right, measure the distances. Right, area small means scale has to be larger. Large scale, small area. Small scale, large area. We discussed that, yes. So the best possible answer here is option B. Okay now? Right. Next step. A 30 meter metric chain is found to be 0 0.05 meter too short throughout the measurement. Right. Very important statement. Throughout the measurement. Throughout the measurement. And right. What do you mean by that? Throughout the measurement. Ante, ante starting low, that, uh, you know, point, uh, 0 0.05 meter too short. Tarvata ending low kuda, 0 0.05 meters too short. Are they meaning it? Okay. Student, okay, throughout the measurement. Throughout the day, starting time will be 0 0.05 meter too short. Ending time will be 0.05 meter too short. That is the meaning. Okay. 
So the, the distance measured is recorded as 300 meters, then the actual distance will be dash. So, the correct length of the chain, designated chain and then 30, chain handle low, 30 meter asana. Okay. And then chain 30 gadu, chain 0 0.05 meter are too short. Right. So, if you put L dash value and the field low chain length 80, it is 30 minus 0 0.05. You will get the answer as 29.95. Correct na? Yes. If you put a measured length uh, and the 300. Right, and the 300 meters. If you do, now go correct length. So correct length and then measured length into L dash by correct na? Yes. So if you do, mana measured length and then 300, L dash and then, right, 29.95. Or what? Mana designated chain length and then 30. If you do, 30, 300 goes 10 times mana answer kara 299.5 meter. Okay. Option number. 299.5 meter option A correct answer. Right. If you do, what if it is too long? Second question will be like this. What if it is too long? Too long and 30 plus 0 0.005 theory. Okay. So what will be the answer? If it is too long, correct length would be right 300 into L dash value 30.05 by 30. Correct now. So what is the answer I get? 300.5 meters. Right. So that is the second case. Okay. Right. Please remember that. Now also one very important discussion we had. Right. Whenever the chain is too short, measured length of the line increases. Right. Please remember that. Okay. When they say the chain is too short, right? Chain too short, then what happens to the measured value? Increases. Measured value will be more than the correct value. Then what will be the resulting error? Positive correction would be negative. So the measured value 300. But what is the correct length of the line? 299 only. So chain too short, the measured length is more than the correct length. Okay, na? Very important. If you do, okay, second case only, let us discuss about that. So they say that the, at the beginning, okay, so imagine this is you know 0 meter, right, and this is 300 meter. Okay. Right. In this question, starting also the chain is 0 0.05 meters too short. Ending also 0 0.05 meter too short. That is throughout the measurement. Second case, ante, what they say is starting low mana chain exactly 30 meter. Undi, tarvata 300 meter measure jesi si tarvata nenu check chesa no, appudu mana value 30.05 meter. Whether they got the value, I'll take, right. I'll take another value. So, ipudu 300 meter measure jesi tarvata mana value ipudu 30.10 meter. Undi. It is not constant throughout, changing. So this is second case. If you do starting time of 30, 300 meter measure, just like that, my chain length is 30.1 meter. So here we have L dash value. That is the question. What is the value of L dash? Starting value 1, ending value another. What is the basic logic? Basic logic is you take the average. Okay, basic logic is you have to take the average. So 30 plus 30.1 by 2, you will get 30.05 meter. Right. Use this value to calculate. Okay, that is the second model of question they will ask. So here, don't take L dash as 30.1, that is wrong. You have to take the average because end values are different. Okay, good quantity. Okay, that's it. Moving on. The most important line in a survey is, right? Survey means here you should understand it is chain survey. Quickly look at the options. Baseline, check line, proof line, tie line. These are all coming in chain surveying and check line and proof line are same, same to same. So two options are there which uh, with the no uh, option B and C, so that is wrong. What is tie line? Tie line is run closer to detail. So imagine, right, I am having my chain line going like this. Very far away from the chain line, there is one detail here. So to plot this detail, if I want to put an offset, it will be a long offset. But Nakudu, I don't want any long offsets. So to avoid this condition, what will I do? I will take a survey line very close to this particular, you know, detail to be plotted, and from here I will start putting offsets. So this line helps me reduce the length of the offset. Okay? What is that line? That line is tie line. So what are they asking? The most important line. The most important line is this line, that is the actual chain line, which is nothing but the baseline. Okay. So baseline is the most important line in any survey, okay, especially chain survey. Baseline is also known as 
the backbone line backbone is very important kada so that same principle okay same principle backbone line or base line is the most important line. always remember the longest line is taken as the uh, base line right during chaining along a straight line the leader of the survey party has three arrows leader pakana three arrows undi while follower is having five arrows okay the distance of the follower from the starting point is touch right see i told you arrows have two purposes to represent the end of the chain tarvata inkoti yusanti the same statement the number of arrows in the hands of the follower will represent number of chain length completed okay because once the surveyor finish one chain then he keep an arrow there leader will follow go to that point take that arrow keep in his hand again follow the leader go to the next point take that second arrow keep in his hand so he has kept two arrows in his hand why because two chain length has been completed so the number of arrows in the hands of the follower will represent the number of chain length completed okay so ipudu mana follower pakana five arrows undi so how many chain length has been completed five chain length have been completed the answer is option c five chain length okay right. so let us see the next question invert tape is made up of an alloy of okay what is the correct answer nickel steel copper steel tin steel aluminum steel the correct answer is nickel and steel right nickel and steel what is the percentage what is the percentage it is an alloy alloy and the combination of two and three two or three metal na yes so nickel steel who will be greater nickel will be greater or steel will be greater see steel will be greater because invert tape is a modification of our steel tape we will not completely replace steel here so nickel will be there uh, only lesser percentage of how much 36 percentage remaining 64 percentage mana steel undi so steel nickel combination ande mana invert tape right so remember what is the advantage the coefficient of thermal expansion of invert is only 1 by 10th of the coefficient of expansion of steel ante oka given temperature and gradient law ipudu mana steel chain 10 cm expand chesese right if it expands by 10 cm sorry my invert tape will expand by how much 10 by 10 1 cm only will only expand by 1 cm okay right that is the idea that is why we use invert tape for whenever high accuracy is required we go for invert tape but it is a soft alloy it can be easily broken so day to day rough work i cannot use high accuracy baseline measurements of geodetic survey i use it for day to day rough measurements i use steel tape right for a well conditioned triangle no angle should be less than so i have already discuss the range of value should be 30 to 120 degree right it should not be less than right this value okay right it should not be less than this value should not be less than this right should uh, not be less than this less than 30 degree okay so our answer is b every 20 meter chain should be accurate with it so they are asking you for the standardization condition so remember Uh, every chain is standardized under a standardization condition of 20 degrees celsius and a pull of how much 8 kgf what do you mean by kgf don't say rocky by it is not rocky by kgf okay kilogram force kilogram force to newton what do you do multiply that with gravity gravity is taken as 10 so it becomes 80 newton 20 degrees celsius and 80 newton then what is the allowable change for my 20 meter 20 meter should be 20 meter plus or minus 5 mm and mana uh, 30 meter chain should be within 30 plus or minus 8 mm so these are the allowable limits so chudandi ikkada mana answer plus or minus 5 mm why plus or minus 5 because they are asking you for 20 ipudu if they ask you for 30 meter chain what is the answer you will take plus or minus 8 mm for 30 okay ipudu 20 is what they are asking so i will go for option b right look at the next question here right which one is the correct statement length of engineering chain is 33 feet that is wrong right our engineer's chain is exactly 100 feet okay so length of engineer's chain is 33 feet wrong right length of engineer's chain is 66 feet adu kuda wrong 33 feet ante mana mana right revenue chain okay na 66 feet ante mana gunter chain right and the length of metric chains are 33 feet that is also wrong so if you know right uh, you know these three are wrong who is the only possible answer left 
the only possible answer left is option C, gunter C. Okay, right. Uh, on a rough terrain, what is the achievable accuracy of chain survey under con conductive? It's not conductive, it should be conducive. Okay, conducive conditions. Right. What is the answer? I told you it is 1 in 250. When our rough terrain, hilly terrains are there, we get the least accuracy in, degree in a chain survey. That is 1 in 250. If the conditions are good, if you are having a flat ground, right, and if you are using invar tape, you are using parameters, spring balance, everything, then you can achieve the maximum accuracy of 1 in 10,000. Okay, Gada? Next question, Jutta. Okay, so the tape corrections are all, go through that. Okay, the, the, the chart, the, the, the accuracy chart also I have given you, degree of accuracy, please go through that. Multiple times we have seen questions like this. Next step, A, B, C, D is a rectangular plot of land. If the bearing of the side A, B is 75 degree, what is the bearing of the uh, side in D, C? Okay, so I already told you, right, how to start drawing a figure. You have to draw a figure, please understand. So if bearing is given, always start with the bearings. This is what I told you. Same thing we'll apply here, we'll start with the bearings. So we put on a line ND, line ikkada AB undi, AB bearing under 75 degree. Okay, so put on the, so this is my point A, on the point A ikkada undi, AB 75 undi, right, should be like this. Correct now? Yes. So this angle is given to me as what? 75 degree. Now, this ABCD is what? Rectangle. Rectangle undi, right, all the remaining sides will be making 90 degrees with the themselves. Yes or no? Yes. So right. Let us name. This is A. So this is C. And this is D. Okay. Rectangle and there. Alright. All the angles inside will be equal to 90 degree. This angle is equal to what? This angle is equal to 90 degree. And what are they asking you? They are asking you for forbearing of DC. So they are asking you for this bearing here. Okay. So student D. They are asking you for this bearing. This is the unknown value that they are asking. So let me find out what is the bearing of AD. So if this 70, 75 degree undi, undi, 90 degree undi. So what will be the uh, you know bearing of the line AD? You can see that the forbearing of AD will be what? 75 degree plus 90. What is 75 plus 90? 165 degree. So and there in the full angle. 165 degrees in the, okay so now we will use our logic here just to basic common sense what is required so if this entire angle is 165 degree what is this remaining angle here it has to be what 15 degree so if that is 15 degree right please tell me if this is 15 degree what is this angle here that is equal to 15 degree entire angle 90 undi, right Tarvata, right this angle 15 degree undi. Undi. So what is this angle? What is this remaining angle here? Right, so it wouldn't be. Okay. So this entire angle, right, this entire angle is 90. This much angle is 15. Then what is this remaining angle? 90 minus 15. What is 90 minus 15? 75 degree. Right. 90 minus 15 is 75 degree. That is the answer. Okay. So what is the answer here? Sorry. The answer is what? 75 degree. Okay. The answer A should be what? 75 degree. Or else you use your basic common sense. Right? If this is parallel, if this is rectangle, na, this line and this line are parallel, na, correct na. Right? This line A B, this line D C parallel na. Parallel and the bearing goes same gada. That's it. That's the fastest way of finding the answer. Okay. What is the answer here? 75 degree. How did I got 75 degree? 90 degree minus 15 degree. So basic common sense is line A B, line D C parallel, and the bearing goes equal. But I wanted to solve just so that you know the uh, alternate approach also. Right. So you can go for the answer here, 75. Right. So let us move on to the next question. In surveying compass, the bearing observed are it. Surveying compass, the surveyor compass, okay. Right. It is uh, surveyor's compass. Right. Surveyor's right. compass. So surveying compass law, bearings observed in Whole circle bearing, reduced bearing, both A and B, none of the above. The answer is reduced bearing. So remember, okay, whole circle bearings are there in prismatic compass. Whole circle bearings in prismatic compass. Reduced bearings in 
write our um, surveyors' compass. Reduced bearing ranges from 0 to 90 degrees. 0 degree is 0 degree north low, or south low. 90 degree is east low, west low. But east and west is interchange. Right? Please remember. Prismatic compass low, WCB follows this. Right? But where is 0 degree? South and low. South and in clockwise direction will increase. And then, south, 0 degree at south, Tarvata, 90 degree is west low. Tarvata, 190 degree north low. 270 degree east low. So please remember, okay? We start from 0 degree at the south end and we go in clockwise direction. Right? Tarvata, right? Prismatic compass low, and the graduation is inverted only. Why? Because readings go we look through a prism. We look through a prism. So prism will give us right inverted image. So to see that particular image direct, the graduation has to be inverted. But in surveys compass, nothing like that. Okay. So some differences we discussed. Very important. I told you one tabulation, go through the tabulation two, three times. Yes. The angle between true meridian and the magnetic meridian at a time is what? So Ikadamana true meridian on the so just imagine Ikadamana true meridian on the Ikadamana magnetic meridian on the so what is the angle between them? The angle between them is what we call it as declination. Declination is also known by another name that is variation. So orientation and they are wrong, magnetic declination correct, magnetic bearing is wrong, dip is also wrong. This declination is also known by another name. What is that? That is variation. Okay. Now I already told you this. Always remember. In case of your AW examination, this polytechnic uh, lecture kind of examinations, right? Right. Whenever there are alternative names, right? Whenever a, a particular parameter is called by more than one name, please highlight that and study. Because they will ask, you know, uh, on that particular point they will frame mostly, right? For example, right, this example only we will see. The horizontal angle between magnetic meridian and uh, true meridian is known as option A, declination, option B, variation, option C, both A and B, option D, none of the above, right? So you see declination, generally, uh, suddenly don't jump and, uh, you know, select option A as the answer. Option C will be correct because both A and B are correct, right? So please remember that, okay? In a whole circle bearing system, right, north 20 degree 30 minutes was corresponds to dash. So what they are asking is, this reduced bearing system in a whole circle bearing will be what? So north 30 degree west, okay, sorry, north 20 degree west. So either mana north, either mana west. So line ekada on the, line ekada on the, 20 degrees 15 minutes, measured like this, correct, nah? yes. So the whole circle bearing of the line should be between 275 degree and 360, right, uh, 270 degree, sorry, it should lie between 270 and 360 degree. So how many options are matching, 69 degree eliminated, 290 degree possible, 290 degree possible, 339 degree also possible, okay, so only one option we can eliminate. So we have to go for calculation. So what is the WCB? WCB will be 360 minus 20 degree. So what is 360 minus 20? 360 minus 20 at day, 340. 340 minus 15 is what? 339 degrees and 15 minutes. 339 degrees and, right, sorry, 45 minutes. 339 degree, 45. 339 degree, 45, the answer is option. Okay, now. Right, if there was only one option between 270 and 360, we can directly go for that. No need for calculation. So always look for loopholes, right? The angle of dip at the pole is what? Is 90 degree. The angle of dip at pole is 90 degree. The angle of dip is zero at equator, right? Is at zero at equator. Why so? Because magnetic field lines are parallel to the earth. Okay. So you imagine this is the uh, you know magnetic north of the earth, or what magnetic south of the earth. So if you look at the magnetic field lines here, they go like this. So if I drop a horizontal at the equator, this is the horizontal at the equator, it is parallel to the magnetic field lines. So when a dip angle is zero, the angle between two parallel lines is zero. At the pole, if I drop a horizontal, this is how the horizontal looks like. This is the magnetic field looking like. What is the angle? 90 degree. Okay, so here at the equator it is zero degree, at the poles it should be 90 degree. Anywhere in between these two points, dip angle varies between 0 to 90 degree. Okay. 
remember there are two lines associated with dip who are there remember associated with dip what are the two lines dip is short form for dispensary with the dispensary we will always find the clinic okay so with the dip we have two lines who are there a clinic lines and isoclinic lines a clinic lines and the isoclinic lines a clinic means what isoclinic means what iso ante enti iso ante same or equal so dip isoclinic lines are lines joining points of equal dip uh, okay equal dip right so isoclinic will join equal dip then a clinic lines will join what lines of different dip that is blunder if you try and join different points you will get infinite number of lines blunder so what is it it will join zero dip so our equator is a good example of our aclinic lines zero dip is that okay so that's the discussion regarding dip right let us move on to the next question here okay right so similarly our uh, uh, dip uh, related to dip uh, related to declination also we have you know two lines now what are they they are agonic lines they are agonic lines and uh, tarvata isogonic lines so chapandi what do you mean by isogonic lines iso ante same or equal so what they will do they will join points of same or equal declination so ipudu chapandi agonic lines in reality they will join points of zero dip sorry zero declination zero declination ante enti mana true meridian tarvata mana magnetic meridian coincides that is the meaning true meridian and magnetic meridian coincides that is the meaning of dip angle is zero that is the meaning of dip angle is equal to zero right next up. the method of plane tabling commonly used for establishing only instrument station instrument station established here and key what is the type of you know um, uh, plane tabling i do the correct answer we can take is resection in traversing to an extent yes we are getting the next instrument station but since they are not giving us any other detail here then right, we can go for resection okay right traversing is also in a way correct but let us go with resection here while surveying a plot of land by the method of plane tabling the field observations and plotting proceed simultaneously field observation and plotting do not proceed simultaneously are recorded in the field books and plotted later all of the above this is wrong because in plane table surveying there is no field book there is no field book game field book le do this is one of the disadvantage of our plane table surveying okay right uh, sorry not disadvantage advantage there is no field book and what is the advantage the field work and plotting proceed simultaneously there is no time delay between field observation and final preparation of plans yes next step right look at this so this is a question from our uh, leveling it's a very very important chapter for us right so let us go through that A relatively fixed point of known elevation above datum is known as a benchmark. Datum datum point is wrong. Reduce level is wrong. Reference point is wrong. The best answer is benchmark. Okay, there are uh, different types of benchmarks for us. First one is GTS benchmark, most accurate, established by Survey of India. There are the permanent benchmarks. Who will establish this? Who, who will establish this? This is established by our state agencies like RNB and our PWD. the third one is our temporary benchmark that is you know for transferring the base elevation and the fourth one is arbitrary benchmark which is nothing but a randomly selected point of known elevation right a randomly selected fixed point of known elevation okay so here the answer should be what benchmark right next step during leveling operation if the back side is more than the fore side then indicates what so chudandi so this is where my instrument is okay this is where i am taking back side this is where i am taking fore side The back side is more than the fore side, so back side reading is more than the fore side. So this is four meter and this is one meter. See how is the ground? The ground is rising from back side point to fore side point. Option two and D. Forward staff is at a lower point. Wrong. Forward staff is at a higher point. Back staff is lower point. The staff behind is lower. Absolutely correct. Yes. Okay. So remember back side and fore side. What is the meaning of back side? first reading taken reading taken on a point of known elevation fore side last reading taken okay intermediate side right for detailing we will take intermediate side staff reading upon a point of unknown elevation right upon change point we will take both back side and fore side upon change point first reading is fore side last reading is back side okay right 
While measuring the distance between two points, if L is the length in kilometer, the correction for curvature is dash. So, what is the equation for correction for curvature? 0 0.07857 d square meter provided d is substituted in kilometer. So, you could have d is not given, but L is given. So, how can I write 0 0.07857? L square meter. They want the answer in true mm unit. So multiply this with 1000, I'll get 78.57 into L square millimeter. So this is the value I'm getting. So 78.57, 78, the dosis option is answer D. So here they are asking you in mm, so you just multiply that with 1000. That's enough. Right. The method of leveling that is used to carry out reconnaissance work. Reconnaissance means that. Uh, Right, speed is more important for you, accuracy important le Right, so speed lo equal importance on the accuracy lo ante importance, right, absolutely do. So what kind of leveling we'll do there? We will do file leveling. Right, check leveling is done to check the accuracy of field work. Profile leveling is conducted along center line of a proposed project. Ikkada of course proposed project uh, is there, there. Uh, we'll do le profile leveling along the center line of that. Simple leveling. Right, simple leveling, right, is nothing but a type of leveling in which only one instrument station is required. When multiple instrument station required, we will go for differential leveling. So, who is the best possible answer here? The best possible answer is fly leveling. Okay, right. The method of leveling in which height of mountains are found by observing the temperature at which the water boils. Parameter, no. Reciprocal, no. Longitudinal, no. Hypsometer, yes. Right, hypsometer is an instrument, right. Hypsometer is an instrument that is used to give us right the temperature at which a particular you know uh, fluid boils. That is proportional to temperature. So the difference in temperatures between points can be equated to difference in elevations between them. That is known as hypsometer leveling. Right. Next, uh, the benchmark has been established at the soffit of an ornamental arch at the known elevation of 100 meters. Okay. Above the mean sea level. Next. Uh, the backside used to establish a height of instrument is an inverted staff reading of 2.105. A forward staff reading with the normally held staff is 1.105. Then uh, taken on a recently constructed plinder, then the elevation of plinder is dash. So I will just try and draw a small figure here. So this mana arch. Okay. This is mana arch. Arch is reading anta right 100 meters only. That is mana benchmark. Right. Next step. Height of the instrument goes on, and the back side goes on, and the inverted staff reading is right, This is right, my inverted staff reading. Then here is the plinth. This is my plinth level. Okay. Plinth is made. Right. Plinth is made. Right. Here is the leveling staff reading. Okay. This leveling staff reading is what? It is correct staff reading. Okay. So, this is 2.105 meter. This is 1.105 meter. What is asking is what is the radius level of this point? So what is the answer? From 100 minus 2.105, from there minus 1.105. From 100, come down, again come down. So 100 minus right 2.105, 2.105 minus 1.105. And then 100 minus 3.21, right? Correct, Kata? Yes. So 100 minus 3 is 97. 96. Point, uh, Right, 9 uh, becomes 30. Right, 96.79 meters should be the correct answer. The answer is option B. Okay, so from 100, come down by 2.105, again come down by 1.10. You get the radius level of this. So, the same question if they ask you, what is the difference in height between the plinth and the uh, right arch? What is the difference in height between them? 2.105 plus 1.105. The height. Uh, Right between the archer and the plinth is what 2.21, sorry, 3.21 meter. That is going to be the height here. So, listen carefully, read the question carefully. Are they asking you for the height or are they asking you for reduced level? They may ask you for the height of the room or they may even ask you for the reduced level of the roof or the floor. Please be careful. It's a very, very important question. Yes. Right. Magnetic declination remains the same at different places, varies from place to place. Does not vary with temperature, none of this. The correct answer is varies from place to place. There are four different types of variations in declination. 
diurnal variation and then daily variation. So daily variation is more where it is more during daytime. Daily variation is more. Diurnal variation is more during daytime, less during night. Diurnal variation is more on a summer day, right, and less on a winter day, right. If you look at that, it is more at the poles, poles and a higher latitude, and less at equator, equator and a lower latitude. Right, that is daily variation due to rotation of the earth. Due to revolution of the earth, we will get annual, annual variation. During a long period of time, if you observe, I get secular variation and sudden changes due to uh, natural calamities is known as irregular variation. These are the four different types of variations. It varies from place to place and it does vary from time to time also. Right. Which of the following statement is correct? Is correct. Okay. All right. Uh, for a station that is affected by local attraction. Right. So station is affected by local attraction. Difference between forebearing and backbearing is always equal to 90 degree. That is blunder. We know if there is no effect of local attraction, difference between forebearing and backbearing of a line will always be equal to 120 degrees. Right. Karavata. Difference between rather forebearing and backbearing of the line is always equal. Sorry. Sorry. Difference between the forebearing and backbearing of the line is always equal to 180 degrees. So if it is affected, this relation is not satisfied. Wrong. Right, that is the problem. One, if the two meridians are parallel to each other, I will get difference as 180. If one magnetic meridian like this at A, second magnetic meridian at B is like this, difference will not be 180. That means there is local attraction. Okay, right. The difference between forebearing and backbearing is not equal to 180 degree. That is the best possible answer we can select. Okay, difference between the forebearing and backbearing is equal to 360 degree. That is blunder. Okay. The method of differential leveling used in order to find the differences in elevations between two points, right? Okay, the method of differential leveling is used. When will I use differential leveling? When do I need to take more than two instrument stations? When the points are far apart, when the difference in elevations are more, or when there is an obstacle present in between. Let us look at that. When they are far apart, yes. Right? There is obstacle in between the two, yes. The differences is too large. Yes. What is the correct answer? All of the above is the correct answer here. Right. Very good. Removal of parallax in theodolite can be achieved by focusing of the objective, focusing of eyepiece, objective and eyepiece, the horizon. What is the correct answer? Objective and eyepiece. Okay. So there are two steps involved in the elimination of parallax. Number one, focusing the eyepiece for distinct vision of crosshairs. Right. And next, focusing of objective for taking star reading. Right, so both we need to do, but tell me, for a single observer, step one need not be repeated. For the entire, you know, theodolite operation, if you are using only a single observer, step one need not be repeated. But second step has to be repeated because the leveling stars will be at different, different locations. Yes. Right. Next step. The rise and fall method of leveling is less accurate than height of the instrument method. Yes or no? Wrong. Because it provides checks on intermediate sites. Remember? We have sigma bs minus sigma fs is equal to sigma rise minus sigma fall and it is also equal to what? Last uh, reduced level minus first uh, reduced level. Last reduced level minus first reduced level. So it is more accurate. Yes. It is not suitable for leveling with tilting levels. Right. Quicker and less tedious for large number of intermediate sites. No. Right. Provide section readings of intermediate sites. This is the best possible answer. This rise and fall method is not a fast method. It is slow method. More number of calculations are there. So the best possible answer here is what our you know checks on intermediate sites also. Right, option D. For true difference in elevation between two points A and B, the level must be set at any point in between A and B, exact midpoint near A, near B. What is the answer? Exactly at midpoint. What is the advantage? There go. There are three errors in my leveling work. Error due to curvature, error due to refraction, and collimation error. Error due to non-horizontality of line of sight. So if I keep my leveling stuff between A and B, exactly in between A and B, distances are same. So the amount of error coming here will be the amount of error coming here. So what happens when I take the difference? Equal errors are there. If by taking difference, equal errors are cancelled. What will I get? Two difference in elevation. That is known as balancing of sight. 
What is the correct answer here? The correct answer is option B. So pollution error is eliminated, error due to refraction is eliminated, and curvature is also eliminated by balancing of side. Okay. Scale plate of a theodolite. light. Upper, lower, none of the above, both of the above. What is scale plate? Scale plate is nothing but mean scale. Where is the mean scale? Upper or lower? Lower. Upper is always or near. You think about your one-year uh, sorry, one year calipers. Main scale, main scale, pina varnier undi. So main scale, pina, right varnier undi. Upper and day varnier, lower and day main scale or scale plate. So it's going to be that size of a theodolite is expressed by the diameter of the scale plate. So here the answer is what? The lower plate, option B. Right. Least count of a theodolite. Remember standard value 20 seconds. Okay. Right. Vernier theodolites can measure only up to 20 seconds. When the whole circle bearing of a traverse lies in between 90 and 180, the latitude is positive, departure is negative. So they are asking for latitudes and departures. So remember, right, this is our latitude, departure, laxus. Positive latitude, negative latitude, positive departure, negative departure. So where is the whole circle bearing line? The line lies between 90 and 180. So 90 and 180 low, latitude and day negative, departure and day positive. So, student, latitude is positive, wrong. Departure is positive, yes. Latitude is negative, yes. Both latitude and departure are positive, wrong. That is first quadrant. Both are negative. That is third quadrant. The answer is option B. Simple logic only. Okay. 0, 90, 180, 270. 90, 180, you know, in between, the latitude should be negative. Departure should be positive. In a closed traverse, right, what happens? Difference between fore bearing and back bearing should be 90 degree, that is wrong. The sum of included angles should be 2n minus 4 times the right angle where n represents the number of sides. Yes, this can be true if the traverse is anti clockwise. Yes, true. Right, so let us keep that option here. Sum of included angles should be 2n minus 1. We did not discuss about any such formula blunder. Right, none of these, that is also eliminated. So the best possible answer here should be option B. Right. The bearing of C from A is north 30 degree east and from B 50 meters uh, east of A is north 60 degree west. The departure of C from A is dash. Bearing of C from A. So C from A. Bearing of C from A. So from A I am looking towards uh, you know C. Right, this is where my point C is. What is this angle? North 30 degree east. The departure of C from A. So they are asking you for departure. What is departure? Departure is equal to L sin theta. What is the length given to you? Length is given to me as 50. 50 sin 30 degree. What is the answer? You will get it as 25 meters. Correct now? Yes. The answer here should be what? Option D. That's it. Okay? Right. So, uh, 50 meters east of A is not 60 degree west. Okay. Ah, they are asking you for departure of C from A. Departure of C from A is this. This is the departure of C from A. So we can go for this. Okay. Right. Next up, the vertical distance between two consecutive contours. What is the vertical distance between two consecutive contours? Contour interval. Be very careful. Contour interval is not the spacing between two contour lines. If you are having contours like this, right? So this is 60 meter contour, 70 meter contour, and let's say 80 meter contour. So this is 80 meters from the datum, this is 70 meters from the datum. What is the difference in elevation? Contour interval. The horizontal distance that you see, that is horizontal equivalent. Okay, please remember that. Contour gradient is a line that makes a constant inclination. Horizontal equivalent is the horizontal distance between two consecutive contour lines. Contour interval is always constant. Horizontal equivalent is not constant. Please remember, horizontal equivalent is inversely proportional to steepness. Very, very important point. Right, that means if two different elevations are very close, right, 70 meter contour, 80 meter contour, okay, or rather 80 meter contour, 70 meter contour. If they are very, very close, there is steep ground. If they are very far away, flat ground is there. Okay, please remember. The direction of steepest slope. So when will I get steepest slope? Steepest slope I will get when I am having the least value of horizontal equivalent. When will I get the least value of horizontal equivalent if I am going at 90 degree now? What is the shortest distance between two lines? It is 90 degree. 
So the direction of steepest slope is at right angles to the contours. Right? I just told you now, horizontal equivalent should be least steep slope you will get. <clears throat> what is the shortest distance between two lines? Perpendicular distance. That's it. An imaginary line joining points of equal elevations on the surface of the earth is known as contour lines. Right? That is what we call it as contour lines. Okay. A circular curve was 300 meter radius and 60 degree deflection angle. The length of the curve and tangent length is dash. Right. So radius is given as C 300 meters. Then deflection angle is 60 degrees. What they are asking you? Length. Length and R into delta degree into pi by 180 degree. Right. Pi by 180 degree. So substitute J D radius is 300. Delta is 60. Arvata pi by 180. Okay, so this this cancel three times. Right, this also cancels 100. So 100 pi. 100 into 3.1416. Correct now. So I should get 314.16. Right. So 314.16 is nothing but option B. Directly again to select the answer. Okay. That should be the answer now. 100 pi. Right. That should be the answer. I don't uh, need any calcis. Okay. Right. Tarvata tangent length. Tangent length and T19. T19 is equal to R tan delta by 2. Okay. R and 300. 300 into tan 60 degrees by 2. Okay. Check what is the value you are coming and see if it is equal to right 173.21. 173.21 means 100 root 3. Right. So see if this is coming as 100 root 3 or not. You should get it. Okay. Right, so when we are talking about this circular curves, please remember the most important discussion is about the elements. First element is the length, length formula we just discussed. Second element is long chord L given as 2R sin delta by 2. Tarvata, mana third ante mid ordinate, mid ordinate ante R into 1 minus cos delta by 2. Okay, uh, later ante I can write like this R minus under root of r square minus l by 2 the whole square if you do approximate uh, if i do it becomes l square divided by eta tarvata fourth element and then apex distance i c apex distance i c and then r into secant delta by 2 minus 1 okay with one and tarvata mana last element and then tangent length t1 i is equal to i t2 is equal to right if you do we just solve it r tan delta by 2 Okay. So these elements are very important. Go through the elements. Okay. Just to match up the formula. We have seen the figures and everything, but for your exam point of view, you should remember this. Right. So degree of a curve for a 30 meter chain is what is the relation? Degree is equal to 1719 by R. That is the relation for a 30 meter chain. If they are asking you for a 20 meter chain, this value will be slightly different. It will be what? Double one four nine. Right. Uh, double one four six divided by d degree. Okay. In railway engineering, slightly different values will take. Now remember, if the chord length is not given, you can assume it is railway. In railway, it is always that. If nothing is, exp is explained about the chain, you take thirty and proceed. Since they are given thirty, there is no doubt. But if they have not given thirty, then you assume thirty and proceed. If they did not say anything like 20 or 30, go for 30. If they say 20, then go for 20. If they don't say anything, go for 30. Okay. So 1719 by R, the correct answer is option B. These relations are there for our 20 meter chains. Okay. Right. A curve whose radius varies from infinity to a certain value is known as our very, very important transition curves. So transition curves are curves of varying radius and curvature introduced in between. Right, a curved line and a straight line path. What do you mean by compound curve? Compound curve means combination of two or more circular arcs. Right, so one circular arc like this, and maybe another circular arc like this. Whereas the center, centers are on the same side. This is compound curve. It's not necessary it is two. It can be more than two also. Right. So we understand what is compound curve. Circular curve means constant radius. That's it. What is a reverse curve? Reverse curve is nothing but a compound curve. But if you have center, so have curve ki opposite sides will be. And then it will be like this, like this. Okay. So, one circular arc, 
second circle arc will be like this okay right so you see first curve ikkada center ikkada second curve center ikkada so our vectors can come and go like this reverse curve right next step the multiplying constant for a tachymeter generally multiply constant and a k k generally enta undi 100 undi right please remember k has no unit why because k is calculated as focal length of the camera divided by the steady interval focal length the distance unit lo undi i kuda distance unit lo undi so ikkada mana k value oka ratio ratio ante no unit but remember c is what f plus d okay F plus D, so F and D distance, uh, D and D distance, uh, so some will also have distance unit, but always remember C value, right, we will express in meter, right, why? Because D is equal to K into S plus C. If you want to add something to staff reading, staff reading is always in meter, C value should also be in meter. So, we can answer it 100 best, analytic condition, assume JD. Next step. The ratio of the focal length uh, of the objective to the steady interval. The ratio of focal length of objective to the steady interval. What is the answer? It is nothing but the multiplying factor. Okay, right. Which one is the correct expression for the horizontal distance between the instrument and the staff for analactic telescope? Analactic is there. The best is the staff intercept, uh, right? And the uh, line of sight, let us assume, is horizontal. Yes. Line of sight will assume it as horizontal. So if you, if you have horizontal line of sight, right, what is the formula? Mana distance formula ante d is equal to k into s plus c. If you analytic condition unte, c becomes equal to 0. Then what is the value of k? k is 100. Our answer should be 100 s. Our answer should be 100 times the staff reading. So that is option D. This is the principle of fixed hair tachymetry. Distances are proportional to staff intercept or the ratio of distance to the staff intercept remains a constant k. That's it. Right. If analytic lens is used, that constant remains 100. The number of satellites involved in the orbit for GPS survey technique is what? 24. So please remember the nav star GPS. There, navigation satellites for surveying, sorry, so for timing and ranging, nav star GPS requires 24 active satellites, right? In how many orbits? Six fixed orbits. Six fixed orbits, remember, okay? Right. The orbits make an angle of 60 degree with each other, but they make an angle of how much? 55 degree with the equator. So, please remember these values, okay? They make an angle of 60 degree with themselves, but they will make an angle of 55 degrees with the equator, right? So the answer is 24. Right, so this is the question from our GPS. Now, please remember, uh, there is one very important question that they ask from GPS is something like this. What is the minimum number of satellite connections required for a good GPS work? What is the minimum number of satellite connections? What's going to be? Please remember, okay. Right, next up. You see, the area of any irregular figure plotted on a map is measured by planning meter, kilometer, optical square, pentagram. What is the answer? Planning meter. Okay. Clinometer is for slope, clinometer is for measuring slope, optical square, why do we want the optical square? Optical square is setting out 90 degree angle, setting out 90 degree angle, pentagraph is used to reproduce right, maps under different scale, reproduce maps at a different scale, that is the uh, use of pentagraph, okay. So, when a planning meter to measure areas of the regular shape to boundary, Clinometers slope measure jadani ki, optical squares 90 degree offset set out jadani ki, and pentagraph for the reproduction of maps into new scales. Okay? Right, so that's it. So these are some major concepts that we have touched in this particular subject of surveying. So please go through the topics uh, uh, very, uh, very precisely go through that. No need to go in depth, right? But please understand the theoretical aspect of everything that we are discussing. Right? Very simple questions only you will get. One small suggestion I can give you is go through the previous year questions of AWE, both TSPSE as well as AS, APPSE. Uh, the APPSE is standard right, compared to our TSPSE. There the ISRO exams uh, papers, could have shouldn't there are the SSEJ exams papers, could have shouldn't there are the any other state uh, you know, uh, question papers you have, that also you use. Okay.
some materials you can you know uh, try as Gupta and Gupta. Gupta and Gupta is a good material. You can try this. Okay, try this is objectives in civil engineering. Objectives in civil engineering, not in surveying. Okay, objectives in civil engineering. Right. After going through your uh, concepts, take these materials and try and solve as many number of questions as possible. Right. So that's it, guys. All the very best. I hope you find success in whichever examinations you are writing.